In this video, I'll be showing you how to display PHP errors. If you've ever done any serious web development volume PHP, you know that catching your syntax errors is a huge pain because PHP usually just dies. One little semicolon and your page won't work at all. I'm editing two pages live on the server, so when I press save, they upload. But here is that parent folder, and if you refresh, you notice, hmm, it doesn't seem like anything's wrong. But, I'm trying to echo this variable, but unfortunately it hasn't been defined. So if I go to this other page where I have error reporting turned on, same exact code, different header, but notice how it's throwing me a warning telling me, hey, on line 5, there's an undefined variable, 1, 2, 3, 4, and line 5, what do you know? That variable doesn't exist yet. If I do something more serious, uncomment this line, you notice I'm doing two echo statements and missing a semicolon. If I save this page, it'll upload, go to the parent one, refresh, and oh, wait a minute, the page just died. Now compare that to this one with error reporting turned on, uncomment it, save it, and upload. It's telling me, hey, parse error on line 7. That's much more helpful in my opinion, especially for development. How do you do this? If you're looking for a quick and dirty way, you can paste this line in, which I'll put in the description too. Basically, it's saying set the any file to error reporting and display all errors. This will apply to any PHP further on in the file. If you have a global nav or a header or something that's included on all pages, you could put this line in there, and then all your pages would have error reporting turned on. However, that's not the best case if you especially want to have a live site where you don't show errors and maybe a development where you do. So the better method is actually to create a new file and put this one line, display underscore errors equals one. You don't need any semicolons, and there doesn't matter if there's a space in between, but it is case sensitive. Now, the important thing is where do you save it and what do you call it? Well, the name is user.ini. This is a hidden file, because it technically has no name, it's just an extension, but like the ini is the real extension. So I'm just going to copy this file name, and I save this file. Just going to save it locally on my computer. Basically, any text editor should be able to create a hidden file for you. Now I go to where I save that, and if you can see this .user file, then you're all set. If you can't see it, on Windows, go into Folder Options, View, and then make sure Show Hidden Folders and Drives is checked. You can also get to that through Control Panel and File Explorer Options. Same thing right here. On Mac, it's a little different, but I've been able to follow these instructions to help other people. And I'm just going to go upload this file. This is just using WinSCP. Anything that FTPs will work. I'm going to drag it into the place where I have that index file. The other thing to watch out for is if you drag it and it disappears. Notice how it's kind of grayed out. That means it's treating it as a hidden file. So your FTP client might be hiding hidden files as well. In WinSCP, go to Options, go down to Preferences, and then Panels, and see right here, Show Hidden Files. Make sure that's checked. If I don't, oh wait, where to go? So I'm just going to undo that. And there we have it back. Now this will display anything below this folder level with errors or the current level. It takes about four or five minutes for this thing to update. So be patient because unfortunately user any files, that's the way the servers are built. They don't update automatically like PHP pages. But after that, you will be able to display errors exactly the way I showed in the beginning. If you've waited more than five minutes and it still isn't working, then you should go and paste this line in, PHP info. Notice it's blue, that means it's a PHP default function. What will this do? Well, it prints out all the stuff about your current PHP server. And I'm just going to do a control F for user.ini. Right here it's saying, hey, what's the user any file name? If it doesn't match .user.ini, then that just means you need to change what you save it as. Because that's what it's saying, it's looking for a .user.ini, and if this is looking for something different, then of course it won't apply. So this user any file applies to everything in the current level of the directory and anything below it. So if you have a development folder, you'd want to put a user any file in the very top of that development folder. And then a completely separate place on your server, or a different server altogether, you can have your live site which is unaffected. Just know that the user any file goes any folder below it, and it will display the errors. So you wouldn't want to put it on the parent directory, like I've set up here. If I was simulating this folder here, errors, to be the actual live site, and then subfolder, I have user innies in both places. But the original way I had this project set up, I only had one, so that the top page didn't display errors, and the lower one did. You just need to be careful where you do it, because it's a security risk. But it's a very helpful thing when you're trying to figure out where did I miss the semicolon, or why my page isn't performing correctly.